Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Friday. It's time for another video. And today I'm going to be talking to you about what I consider to be one of the best magic and mentalism effects ever created. And you don't even know about it. But trust me, very soon you're going to be knowing about it and you are going to be doing this. This thing is fire. You want to know what I'm talking about? Here we go. So today I am going to be talking to you about a new trick from Phil Smith Creative and uh, it's now available to pre-order but a lot of people aren't aware of this. This is called the Fusion Mosaic Phenomenon and it's only available from Phil Smith Creative. Now if you don't know who Phil Smith is um, and I think most people in the magic industry does but Phil Smith is an incredible mentalist He's an incredible creator, performer, innovator, and there's nobody in the world that knows more about uh, marking systems, graphic design for magic and mentalists than Phil. Uh, he's worked with the biggest companies in the world uh, on products, and he is the go-to guy when you want to get something done right. Uh, when I had the idea for Cube 52, the person I went to was Phil Smith. Um, I'm working with Phil on a few different projects right now, and I have been lucky enough to be privy to this trick that I'm about to tell you about right now, the uh, fusion mosaic phenomenon. Now, let me just, you're about to see an interview with me and Phil, uh, where I ask him all about it, but I've been aware of this deck for a little while now. Um, Phil was the person who put together the final reveal for Ryland's America's Got Talent Act. So if you saw Ryland in America's Got Talent and you saw those nine pictures that were selected from the audience come together and as they came together, they turned into a picture of me and Ryland. Well, that was Phil. Um, he was the guy that created that whole system and made that work. Um, I went to him and said, I'd like to do this. And he said, yeah, I can make that happen. And just like Phil always does, he came up with the perfect solution. While I was with him, I told him that he needed to build that into a deck and he has and he's moved quickly on it. Now, this hasn't really been shouted about to the magic industry. I don't think it's appeared on the Magic Cafe. I don't think it's appeared on Facebook, but it is currently available to pre-order on his website and uh, it's going to be shipped mid to uh, late November. I'm going to tell you all about it. This is not going to be a review. I am going to do a review a little bit later on, but I am going to tell you a little bit about it in this video because I just love this trick. I get nothing from doing this other than the fact that I think that there's probably nobody in the world that has performed this more than me um, because I've had it for a few weeks now and I've been going out and gigging it for a few weeks and the reactions it gets are insane. Before I say anything else, I'm going to run this interview with Phil. Uh, actually, before I run the interview with Phil, Let's have a look at the trailer because that'll give you a bit of a frame of reference as to what this is. Imagine the final reveal from Ryland's America's Got Talent Act, but close up, built into a, into a photo deck and you've kind of got the right idea. Here's the trailer. I'm going to play the trailer for you. And uh, and then after the trailer, we'll bring you back into the studio. My name's Phil Smith and I invent and design magic tricks. And this is probably my greatest creation to date. A combination of fascinating and powerful principles I call the fusion mosaic phenomenon. The spectator makes a genuine free choice from a pack of picture cards. And then loses it in the deck. As they concentrate, you take out cards, trying to read their minds, maybe finding cards with colors that match or the same kind of vibe. Okay, here's how it works. These photos are pretty weird, but I'm sure that in amongst all of them is the image you're thinking of. So give nothing away as I go through. A wooden bowl, some folders, a chrysalis, a cuddly toy, some firewood, a delicious charcuterie board, maybe, a bread basket, 
some croissants, some paintbrushes. I'm not sure if I've got it, but for the first time, say out loud, what was the image you were thinking of? The dog. You see, I said that your image was somewhere amongst these. But the thing is, you weren't thinking of just one of these cards. You were thinking of all of them. You know, I think this might just be my favorite thing that I've ever invented. This is the fusion mosaic phenomenon. So go back and look at that again. That final reveal, when you have all of those individual cards and they come together, none of them mean anything, and then they come together and they form the exact image that the spectator is thinking of, that's one of those sixth sense moments right there in that they just don't see it coming. It's, it's classic magician in trouble, but taken to the next level. And when you form those images together and you realize that it's made the image of the dog in that situation, honestly, I've performed this so many times now and audiences just freak out. Now, obviously, here's the thing. I'm telling you this, I've been, this is not my trick. I've got no involvement on it. I'm not on the tutorial, but as you're gonna hear in the interview with Phil in a minute, um, I, 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 I have kind of been aware of this right from the very beginning because it was me that convinced Phil to put this deck together based on what he was able to put together for Ryland in AGT. And I'm so glad that he did because selfishly, it means that I've got the deck that I specifically asked him to create for me. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you more about it in a minute, uh, but before I do, I want to play this interview with Phil. He's going to, I've asked him all of the questions that you guys want to hear, and uh, he covers exactly what this deck is, what it does. He's left no stone to, uh, left unturned. By the end of this interview, you'll know exactly what Fusion Mosaic Phenomenon is, you'll know exactly how it works, and you'll know exactly as to whether it's suitable for you. Okay, I am sitting down with one of my favorite people in the magic industry, somebody that I've worked with on many, many projects. I have said this to anybody that listens. He is an incredible mentalist, an incredible performer, an incredible creator. And when it comes to graphic design and playing card marking systems, there is absolutely nobody in the world, bar none, that knows more about them than this man, the one and only Phil Smith. How are you doing, Phil? I'm very good, thank you. That was a pretty spectacular intro. Thank you, Craig. But it's true, and I'm so excited that I can finally share with the rest of the world that this incredible deck is now going to be available for people to be able to get. Like, I have been waiting for this for so long. This is exciting stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been one of these ones. It's been in development for a long time, and it's sort of the culmination of a bunch of different things that have gone back a long time. But, yeah, it's, it's finally <laughs> in its final form on the presses. So yeah, it's quite, it's quite exciting. I'm really excited. Now, obviously, as I said in the introduction before we jumped on this interview, it's called the Fusion Mosaic Phenomenon. Yes. And a lot of people won't have heard about this because there's been no hype. You've not mentioned it at all. So what I'd like to do, first of all, if we can, is talk about maybe the history behind this, where it came to be, how it came to be in development, and then what it does yeah. and, 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 and why everybody should have one. So... If we start with the history, because this is, you know, new magic tricks are coming out in magic all of the time. And this is very unique in that I've never seen anything like this before. That the principle behind this is just crazy good. Can you talk about the history behind this a little bit? The, yeah, the, so the... It, it's it, like I said, uh, when I'm, I've been talking about it before, it's, it's like a combination of a bunch of different things. I've... I've been involved in art and design since I was a little kid and I've always been a big part of that is not just the technical side of being able to produce artwork but kind of understanding perception how people sort of read images and perceive them and that's one of the things that I found fascinating and interested in magic and you know I've been in, involved in doing marked cards which is like a what I call like a two-tier perception so when somebody looks at a playing card with a marking system on it they read it as just a basic playing card and they have assumptions about that but with the marks there's a second tier that magicians know so you perceive it differently and 
so, so I've, I've always been interested in that. And we were talking, I think that it's, it's no secret that you um, were working with your son Ryland on his um, AGT um, material and mm -hmm. how he was going to fall the pants off them and create something unique and exciting because it's so like well trodden now the, the there's almost like there's a few memes that i've seen going around about the the same tropes that magicians on agt do and so yeah. you've got this young kid coming in and he's new and he's new in magic and it, i think that when we were talking it was about creating something that was the the, the simon's not seen before Yes. That he's not just going to put a box down in front of me and say, Simon, I've got a present for you. We'll come back to this later, which is, you know, the, a framework that works on that format. And you had an idea that you wanted to sort of combine together some images uh, 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 and somehow get to this um, sort yeah, of... Yeah, original... if you remember when I first spoke to you about this, my original idea was to have Simon and Eric Cowell and have lots of different pictures come yeah. together and form an image of Simon and Eric Cowell, which later then became an image of me and Ryland. Yeah, I think the... the but, and again, but it was about trying to find a way to avoid just the exact same, like, sort of tropes that people have done before on AGT. Mm -hmm. um, and that you wanted to... Yeah, it, it made sense to create something that leveraged and, and expressed, you know, like Ryland's development and learning his magic from you. Yeah. Um, and I had been working on something in the background, as I usually am, about a way of doing that, about creating these images um, in, in quite a unique way. So rather than having these very abstracted images, which is something that's been done before, of course, where you put like, you have these images that don't look like they mean anything, and then you combine them together and it forms an image, just a sort of a traditional kind of mosaic kind of thing, that there was a way to have a, an image, like it, it is a photograph of something. This is a photograph of something. This is a photograph of something. And so they all have their individual contexts, but when they're brought together, it rebuilds that context and somebody will see the whole image. Yeah, and that's sort of that. That's what we we worked on. I've, I've still got it. Every time I, I the the actual print that I did for um, uh, Ryland's AGT is on the wall just here in my office. And I yeah. <laughs> and I remember when you first tried to explain the idea because I, I I I said what I was trying to achieve, and you did what you always did with, do, which is leave it with me, and then you just sent me a a, a load of Facebook messages of like house and yeah, here's a horse here's a, a cat horse. and i'm like what am i looking at here and then you sent me an image of your face made up of those nine images and i was like that's the most incredible thing i've seen in my life that's so magical and so clever i was like can we do that and you were like yeah i think we can it's it, it's it it's more time consuming than it seems as well because a lot of the, and we've talked about this we we're talking about it yesterday about something that a lot of the time when i'm working on something like this it's designing the workflow to be able to create it is kind of part of it because the projects that I work on are so varied that I'm, each time is something new. So I have to spend a long time figuring out how to do it and then, you know, just streamlining that. So the one that you used on, um, well, Ryland, sorry, used on AGT, I think was the third or fourth one of these that I created because I had to um, sort of, you know, figure out how to do it and build it together. So it was the, the one that I did. We found a really good photo of um, Simon and Eric that we were going to use, mm. but we ha I had to Photoshop loads of stuff in it so that it would work in this context. Like they were quite far apart, and we had mm. to like, and it's all to do with this sort of understanding how it's going to look, and then how that's going to break up, and how we're going to construct the individual images, and then it, and you know, it does. There are a few things about it that bug me. If we were going to do this again, I wouldn't I would do it slightly differently with the. Um, um the agt one but it like it, it, it worked yeah, live in the audience it was such an incredible moment because nobody saw what was coming you know there were all these individual images that people had selected randomly from all over the theater and then that moment that they all came together and people realized it was like what i think that that's part of it as well as the in in magic i think i'm not sure if you've ever seen um Joshua, Josh Jay's got this presentation he does about 
research in magic and the thing that people like most about magic and one of them is surprise is that it's not being fooled so much but it's surprise um and so that like bringing the images together um because it's something you know something new in magic and it's this sort of new visual that people aren't familiar with seeing yet it, it, it got that surprise it was that and it, it was really great to be a, to be able to help give Ryland the opportunity to deliver that yeah because you know, he's going to kill it like he, he's such a pro every time I've seen him which is bonkers because he's the a kid yeah. but he's got to have the you know the the tools to yeah to 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 to, to shine so it was nice to and I felt really grateful that I was able to Oh, help you guys with that. We couldn't have done that without you. I mean, it was just so awesome. And I remember saying to you during this whole process, you need to do more with this. Like, this is something that you need to take to the next level because this is this is something that... It, I mean, it did feel when we were cooking it up that there was something else there, that there was more. And of course, like whilst we were talking about it, um, we were working on some other projects at the same time which i'm sure that we're all exciting and will come out eventually um and you said oh you should do a you should do a deck with this you should do a deck with this you release a trick with this but of course i'm working on a million things and i was like oh, I will, i'll sit down and have a proper think about it at that at some point and then i think that you must have been thinking about it as well and just sort of like if you do decide to do it you could do it like this and essentially the structure that you decided uh, like described to me it, i went I'm not sure I can think of a better way of doing it in terms of the, the so the, 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 you know, so with the five um, sort of it, like core images that are in the fusion mosaic phenomenon now. And then because of the way that it breaks down in terms of the mass of the deck, there's nine images yeah. um, for each of them to construct them. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's done a lot of the thinking for me. I just have to sit down and actually do it now. <laughs> so it, was, it took a while to, um, like, again, sort of work out how to, Sort of bring it to life, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm grateful that you sort of gave me that kick of the ass to. Um, I'm so glad that you put it together because you sent me one of these decks a few weeks ago now, and I've actually gone out and performed it several times, and the reactions it gets, it's just incredible. Like it's, it's that sixth sense moment. It's that surprise element that you talked about. Yeah, it's the, the sort of a context shift. I always find that stuff fascinating. Yeah, they just nobody ever sees it coming. They don't know what you're doing, um, and it's great. Um, let Let's talk about what the deck actually is, so that people understand. Because if anybody's seen what Ryland did on AGT, which was take rock, nine images that look very random, it just looks like images of buildings and so on and so forth, but you put those together, they become. In in that in Ryland's case, a picture of me and uh, me and Ryland. What you've done with this deck of cards is you've got five force images, which we can talk about in a bit. Yeah, and the rest of the deck, other than some extra cards, which again we can talk about in a bit, the rest of the cards are made up of five banks of nine cards. Yeah, and each bank, when put together, they all look like random pictures. They look like nothing. Yeah, so the, 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 the sort of the framing for the deck, the idea is when I introduce it and I'm performing for people, I say, so like, oh, I, I want to show you something using this. It's just a deck of photos that I got from a uh, photography exhibition that I went to. And so the box sort of, I've, I've got one here, the box sort of looks like it, it, it's just got all of this sort of disguise for this um, photography exhibition. So that's in one line, you out of the way of what the deck is. What are these pictures? They're just sort of arty pictures. And some of them are pretty esoteric and a little bit abstract but that's the that's what it is and the backs are a, a photograph of a building with a logo for this um uh, for this exhibition on and so you introduce these and shuffle them up and have them pick out five cards um and of course you have to control the five cards but they have a free choice of those then so it feels very fair for them there's a point at which they're making a decision there's no way that you could know what it is um, and they return them to the cards the deck and mix them up so it's all very easy. It's very authentic. And you then go through and take out nine cards. And you see, you, your explanation is, I'm going to read your mind and try and have you pick up on, uh, send out what this image is that you're thinking of. And they're all 
sort of wrong, but they're kind of, they've got the similar sort of, you say, I'm going to, sometimes they'll have the same color or the same kind of vibe. And so you show them to them one by one. This is my performance. I know, I know that you've got a slightly different way of doing it, and that's, I guess, the beauty of it. Put them down, face down on the table, or face up very jumbled up. And then you explain that, I mean, this, I guess just describing the video that I've done, where it's just, you, as you turn them over, it becomes clear that it is the, the mosaic. It is a, a large version of whichever image it was that they were thinking of. And then you've got the their card, the one that they originally thought of on the top of the deck, and you flip it over. I've discovered that in performance is quite useful because it creates this very visual, there's no doubt that they can see the small version of the picture and then the large um, fusion mosaic. And that's that just that, but that revelation is just um, is itself kind of fascinating. And then but you've also got the added extra hit of them. But, but how did he know what I was thinking of? So you've got mm. this sort of double whammy, it's, which is, you know, always uh, incredible. Fun. And to answer questions that people are going to have about this. So first of all, the you know, as you would expect with the Phil Smith product, the cards are marked on the back. Yeah. So in, in several ways. Should we talk about that? So each, every single one of the cards in the deck, in addition, so you've got five very definite um, images, which are um, a car, a dog, a house, a tree, and a flower, which are, if you're a, a sort of a mentalism nerd like me, you will know that they are five very commonly drawn items. So that's another option for presentations. But then the rest of the images are just sort of like weird lifestyle and household things, like some, some glasses of wine and some boxing gloves hanging up, a pile of ham some some washing a, a wardrobe with a shoe at the bottom all of this sort of stuff things that they all make sense individually um and also because each one of them is a thing on the back of every one of the cards it says which set it's from where in the set it goes so it would be dog two and which what's on the on the other side so you can also just do a pretty straightforward mind reading thing where they take one of any one of the cards out and you can tell them what it is. So you can build a whole routine using it like that um, and then culminate in the, the full sort of fusion mosaic reveal, which is quite good fun. Um, and although the, I realized when we're at Blackpool, I'm sure you have, have had this from Demon at, at different places, that people come from all, all around the world. You know, it's the world's largest magic convention. And there's tricks because I do mentalism and I use language and stuff quite a lot that people love but they can't perform in their own language because it just doesn't work it can't, they can't use it so the fusion mosaic phenomenon doesn't require any particular language to uh, to perform and even if you can't read english um in performance easily there's also another set of markings on the back which actually isn't on the version that i sent you because it's a, the, that's i guess the benefit of prototyping yeah which lets you without any very immediately see which set and what location it is. So you can build the mosaic and check as you're doing it so that there's no mistakes. Yeah, so yeah. So, and the, the, the system that I've created, I think on that one is quite interesting. There's no coding or anything for the what the card is. It, it's, it's like a, a language, you know, it literally just says the word because I've kind of been building this method that I've used on a few projects with you as well, where I can, code and hide an yeah. entire word it's pretty sneaky that's great that's awesome yes we've, we've used that in a few different projects and that's awesome that's great i haven't i haven't seen that version that's even better <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's very subtle but one of the things that i sometimes when we go to blackpool i've always got um my friends luke and john who are brilliant performers very good thinkers and they they help me a lot with this stuff but they don't always have ages to learn tricks so when we're at blackpool they will Sometimes there'll be tricks where I'm like, right, here you go. We're performing this tomorrow and demon it, learn it. And so everything that I'm doing now, um, I try and I'm trying to simplify as much as possible, not just because I want people to make it easy for them to perform, but because I know at some point I might have to teach somebody how to do it. And they've got like three hours to learn it. So this, like the way that I've done the, 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 the thing on the back now to make it as self-working as possible is influenced by I, I kind of made it sound like I like I, they're, they're so good I wouldn't ever put that pressure on someone else to be able to like commercially and professionally perform something like this but I want to make it as, as easy as possible for them and of course that ends up making it as easy as possible for everybody ideally that's amazing that's fantastic and because of that system and because the marking system is in place I mean 
you could literally have a, have a situation where you hand these cards out, they are shuffled, you have somebody think of think of something, you take random pictures out, face down, throw them on the table. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything. They can apparently mix them up into an order. You lay that order out on the table, and when you turn it over, it doesn't look like anything. But then you push all of that together, and I it think becomes... that's the, that's your 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 um because I sent the I sent the, the deck to you, yes, with, without any description or instruction about like what to do, other than that it's possible to make this. That's why I quite like doing things like that because I know that you'll come up with something great that's fundamentally different to whatever my like weird version is yeah it's amazing it really is. and i think that people that get this i think what's going to happen especially if they're even half creative they're going to come up with their own ways of performing it their own ways of revealing it and i love the fact that you could even do this very visually in a parlor show by placing them onto a onto a board and there's just so many presentational opportunities with it yeah really. and, and there's there's a variety to how you can do it as well when i'm performing it live for people i'll often do it so that i'm doing the card putting the cards down face up in a very jumbled up way so they don't form the mosaic but i've discovered if you perform over a webcam for somebody and it works really nicely on a camera if you do that the way that the image is compressed on the screen makes it too obvious. It forms the, the first time I did it for somebody um, on camera, I'm looking at the screen, I'm like, this isn't gonna work. It's so obvious, it's each one that you put down as you, you show them the card and as you bring it back, it just immediately begins to form the image. So this, it, it, it's interesting how it works. So the, the demo that I've got on the, um, on the site and the, the one that I put on YouTube is the face down version. Just because of that, the, the, just the, the fact that doing it on camera it like kind of works in a different way. It even compresses down the mark so that they look slightly more obvious on camera. In spite of like, you know, you've performed it. I've shown the deck to so many people. No one's spotted it. Oh, <laughs> I'm using it on screen. I'm looking well, at it. And I know you were kind of, uh, when we were doing it with Ryland, you were like, okay, so we're going to have these images on stage. And I, 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 I remember saying to you, nobody's going to see a thing. They just look like so random. They're just, And they do. You don't see anything. The deck... You just and it's hidden in plain sight. You don't see a thing, and then yeah. and they come together. It's like that sudden realization. Like, hold on a minute. That's yes. just. I had a I was, had a conversation with my friend Luch, who is people. He's a really great mentalist in the UK. I met up with him the other day, and we were talking about this. And one of the things is, as you're showing the cards, if you if you say what the the the, the image is before you turn it round, it makes it much more obvious because rather than having to look at the image and work out what it is and some of them are a bit odd if you say so there's a a chrysalis and then show it they're mentally primed to look for that so they won't see it as anything else so there's loads of interesting little sort of psychological elements as well to be able to create distance between the actual final reveal and what their perception is of it so yeah, the same the same is true for close-up magicians as it was for Ryland. You know, the reason we put this together, yeah. the reason we wanted a revelation like this, like you said at the beginning of the interview for AGT, was because Simon and AGT had seen everything. One thing I'm finding with this, having performed it now, is that audiences don't know what's going to happen. They haven't got a clue until they start seeing that image form. Yeah. They don't even they don't even have a clue what to expect, and you know I I find sometimes magician uh, audiences can be jaded. You know you go to a gig and they're like, oh sign a card, are you going to make it come to the top of the deck? You know, <laughs> yeah. doing corporate circuits, and you, you do get people that are kind of switched on to magic and they have seen tricks before. I perform this to so many people in so many different places. No one sees it coming. No yeah, one. God, I hope, I hope they've not seen it before. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it's quite, I mean, it's one of those things is that the, the, the way that the reveal works as well, it's quite, it leads into a sort of conversational because it's like, it, you can look at it and the illusion is there on the table and it can still be, you can still see what each one of the images is because there's no switch or anything. It's just like an optical illusion. And people, you know, it's still like the kind of thing that you'll see on Facebook or YouTube or this, people are interested in that and they can still, oh, I can see that there's, oh, that's his, that's the, you know, the tail of the dog or whatever. And it still all makes sense. And then, of course, that there's you know there's five full different reveals, each one of which is made up of these different things and works in a slightly different way. And so, even if somebody's like show me again, 
there's a way to do it so you can yeah. eliminate the one that they chose from the force section at the beginning or just deliberately like specifically force one of the outcomes that you want because at the end of the day it is a deck of cards and we all know how to accomplish pretty much anything that we want using it so if you want to go off piste and freestyle it, it, it you know it, it allows that exactly. Plus, like we were mentioning before that there's some like additional little reveals that because when you print a deck of cards it's not you know 50 cards it's 56 cards because you've got all of the extras so i've put a few extra bits and pieces in kind of with a view to building out different routines and creating some different alternative ways of handling things so it's not just the main fusion mosaic reveal is that there's scope to do something else as well because it, it is a marked picture deck as well which is itself quite exactly. sort of interesting in its own way oh yeah there's so much you can do with it beyond the uh, sort of the final reveal and and on the tutorial on the on the project you go through lots of different ways of actually using these force images including and you alluded to this earlier on they are able to be forced psychologically yeah so <sighs> I first sort of like learn about a lot of this stuff from Banachek's famous, you know, psychological subtleties that there are things that people are gonna more frequently think of if you ask them to think of you know, a vegetable or a fruit or something. And the the sort of the five most common objects that people will draw, depending on which authority you reach out to for this, is it, 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 the ones that we chose. Why I why I picked those ones: the car, the dog, the house, um, flower, the tree. I think that's five, five things that right. sense. Um, um, so if you ask somebody to, and there's ways to sort of steer them verbally towards this, which is something that we cover. Um, and then there's a way to find out which one of those they're um, thinking of. And so that there's, in that way, you can do it without the initial card um, force where you make them think of one of the objects using the cards. And you can use it as a very organic reveal. Another way of doing it is if you're doing just drawing duplications is to not try and drive towards that. Just, just do your regular drawing duplication routine. So I've got like a nice close-up one that I do. And then quite frequently, once you know what they're thinking of, without having really set it up or gone into it, you can then sequence into this as the reveal. Mm -hmm. which is a, like quite a nice organic way of doing it if then and that know, will happen more often than not it happens that kind of thing happens a lot i'm not i'm not going out working that particular approach but i anybody who does do drawing duplications you're going to get a lot of cars houses you know dogs trees flowers and <laughs> and when that happens you know you're ready to you're ready to go it's quite quite nice sometimes to have these sort of like extra touches ready to go with these things and, and just sort of be ready for these sort of organic moments that happen. So yeah, that's something that I wanted to build into it. And and also um, on top of all of that, you, you have extra cards as well. There's double faces, there's double backers, yeah. which are always useful. Yeah. Um, and actually one of my routines requires a double backer, as I've mentioned to you. you know? Yeah, that's a really nice one. <laughs> yeah, I'm using the old Christ, uh, Christ Force, and it just makes it so easy um, with nothing. But um, yeah, you also have a couple of revelation cards, which yes. are super smart. Can you talk about those briefly as well? Again, I quite like this sort of like context shifting. So you... you um... I think this is a great way of doing it for somebody says, show me it again or do something again. Um, and you don't want to do the full fusion mosaic reveal because maybe you want to do it at a different table or whatever. Um, and there's a couple of cards which are duplicates of other cards in the deck with hidden inside them one of the force objects. So there's a one of the one of the images is just a, a shelf with a picture frame in it and a vase. And there's a duplicate of that card with of the rose in the picture so it's like a piece of art in the thing and there's another one which is one of the four subjects is a car and one of the four subjects is a, a dog and i've got another car uh, card which has got the dog driving the car and so the idea is that you you know you can have two people pick something and then sort of conceptually fuse them together with the card or do a, a change so this wasn't the card you were thinking of and then do the however it is and then put the dog inside just th there's lots of visual things like this but I, I kind of sometimes when i'm working on these projects is that i don't necessarily have um the sort of the final routine conceptualized for it but just a, like a, a sense that it would be cool to and then once you've got it in hand the, the routine finds its 
finds itself. So I think that that's, uh, I think people will enjoy like the way that we've framed that and the instructions for it, but also like, finding their own way of doing it. Absolutely. And this is available uh, for pre order, but it's going to be available shipping from november is that right yeah so they're sort of the final stages of being on the presses at the moment um with our, our supplier they're going to i mean these are the same quality cards that we've always made they're really really nice poker sized cards with a good finish on so if you want to do faro shuffles or something like that they'll definitely be able to do it um the goal is to ship in november um so that people will be able to do these at their sort of holiday gigs i've put a big rush on the production because i want to be able to get these out into people's hands i, sh I showed um um, I showed John Carey this and he was like, oh, like people will we, we'll need this for our Christmas gigs because people are going out a, a lot and it's nice to have something new. Um, uh, it's a limited run that we're doing with the first ones, which is why I put the pre-order on, is that I know that they're going to, I think we're going to chew through the first order quite quickly and then it's going to take longer until after Christmas. So if people are interested in, they think maybe that this is something they want to do, then the pre-order is probably the best way to like guarantee that they're going to get one of this first orders. So, but so when are they going to be shipping out? Do you know roughly? Will it be sort of beginning of November, mid November? It could be mid to mid to late November. Um, the manufacturing is very locked in. This is just a little behind the scenes um, details. The, the the actual print process is very controlled because it's just they've got this many they've got to do. It's the it's the shipping often is what takes longer um, because it's got to get from somewhere quite far away via about five or six different um, mechanisms. And uh, yeah, we, we did a we did a ship in uh, a while ago when we were doing the elites, and um, we thought we got it all figured out, and we discovered that it had gone via Russia and it got stuck in like Russian customs somewhere. But but we hope that's not going to be an issue with this one, um, and we're, we're pretty I'm pretty confident. I've spoken to my guy, and we're going to get like I say get a rush on and. So yeah, <laughs> that made it sound really sketchy. Then <laughs> it's a real, it's a real thing. It's definitely going to happen. <laughs> and it's available right now to pre-order on the. Uh, you can't get this from Magic Shops. You can't get this from Murphy's Magic. You can't get this from Penguin. You can't get this anywhere. The only place you can get this is from you directly. Yes, Billsmithcreative.com. You ship worldwide. Yes. Um, and I think the price is ridiculous, uh, like rid considering it's uh, the amount of effort and time that I know that you've put into this and the amount of money you've spent creating this system. You've got it for £30 pre-order and then when, it, when they're in stock, £35. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, I, yeah, well, well I, I, don't know. I could, maybe I'll just, I'll put a zero on the end for you, Craig, just to. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> No, hopefully, yeah. hopefully, it will um, it's people will enjoy it. Like I said, it's, like you said, Phil Smith created Phil with two L's though, guys. Don't get the URL wrong. Um, dot com, and uh, yeah, this is it. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm just really excited about it. I'm really glad that I got to talk to you about it today, Craig. Because so unique, so different. Um, I love it. I can't wait for people to see it. It's something. It's like a fresh breath air. It really is. And I know that you've got, and I don't want to talk about this now because I want to make this about fusion mosaic phenomenon, but I know you've got lots of other stuff in the pipeline. Um, there's lots of other things that are going to be coming out through your website and you're going to be at Blackpool and and, and you're going to have lots of fun, yeah. new, different goodies. I'm sure we'll do another interview at some point before then, but I, I, I want to congratulate you on this because having been there watching from the beginning and seeing it turn into what it now is, it's a real worker. And I think that anybody that gets their hand on it is going to love it. I really I, I hope so. And, you know, thanks again for your sort of like pushing me to actually pull my finger out and get it together because it's, well, it's been, it's been good fun. I wanted it for myself. So I thought <laughs> if, I you, if I push you and you make it, I'll get one. So that's awesome. well, yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> amazing so guys uh you can go i'm going to bring this back into the studio now but you can um uh, you can go and pre-order these right now at philsmithcreative.com and uh you can pre-order and uh they will ship worldwide as soon as they come in mid to late november and uh you'll be seeing a uh, a full review soon but trust me these are brilliant phil thank you so much Thanks for having me, Craig. Thanks a lot. So first of all, thank you to Phil Smith. Thank you so much for putting 
uh, the time aside to come and do that interview with me. I really appreciate it. And also thank you for producing this trick. Like I said in the interview, it's now available on pre-order and I can't believe he's got it for 30 quid. That's absolutely insane. Um, what I love about this trick the most, and I do it very differently to Phil, and you heard in the interview that the deck can be thoroughly shuffled. And how I do it is I have the deck shuffled. Just like with all of Phil's stuff, you can see the marks a mile off. Like my eyes are terrible. I normally can't see marks, but anything that Phil does, I can see the mark straight away. So I have the deck shuffled and I have a card taken and uh, taken. Uh, but because there's five force images that they can pick, you can get away with some incredibly fair forces. If you think like an impromptu Quran 101 deck, um, you'll kind of understand where I'm going with this. Um, it, you have a very free choice of, a, of, of an image. They then shuffle the cards and I just go through and I'm just throwing cards down into their hand. Face down, I'm just throwing cards. Could be this one, could be this one, could be this one. Very different presentation to fill. And then I'm, I'm showing them and I actually do it face up. So I lay the images face up on the table and bring them together. And as they do, that image just forms. Phil, as you saw a lot of the time, has it face down and then turns them over. There's no right or wrong. The double backers that you get in the set are also great because with the double backers, you can do, I alluded to this in the interview, but you can do the old Christ force. So you can have, if you want it, if you didn't want to have it shuffled, you could have the, the, um, the bank of images set up in order. And then you can use that double backer to have them cut anywhere they want to. And you just take out the nine cards that they cut to. And then you can do like a, uh, you know, like a, um, uh, what's that? What's that? Swindle switch. Paul Curry swindle switch. Uh, so they feel like they're randomizing the cards into a random order. And then when they turn them over, they don't mean anything. And then you push them together and it's the image that they picked. I mean, it's just incredible. It really is. There's so many different options with this deck. The deck, it, I mean, I've got a prototype deck. I haven't got the final version, as you heard in the interview, but my prototype deck, I've been using it solidly now for about four weeks, and it is it, it is great. It's printed really well. Um, it looks fantastic. You can't see the marks from a mile off. When you have someone just look through and look at the pictures, they look just like pictures, exactly as they should look. Like, everything is as it's meant to be. Phil has thought this through to the nth degree. I love this. This is such a strong revelation. You know, it was um, uh, Di Vernon that said, if you've got a thousand forces and one revelation, you've got one trick. If you've got a thousand revelations and one force, you've got a thousand tricks. This is probably the best revelation of a forced image that I have ever seen. And as Phil said, you know, from a psychological point of view, there's so many different ways of doing this if you're a mentalist versus if you're a magician. There's so many different ways of doing this. But if you're looking for something unique and different to add to your act, this is it. And I hope the world, like, sits up and pays attention. I consider Phil a friend. We're working together on several projects for various different companies like Penguin and Murphy's. And he is a joy to work with and such an intelligent guy. And as I say, the DMC deck is just next level so you all know how clever phil is and a lot of you have probably seen ryland's performance on agt and that reveal brought the house down well imagine being able to do that close up with the deck of cards that just look like a photo deck this is incredible it really is i think that if enough people know about this this could very easily be trick of the year uh, and I know there's a lot of tricks that are in contendership for trick of the year. You know, the, you've got this, in my opinion. You've got, uh, you know, you've got the Demi deck. You've got MacBook Mini or the Mini Book Pro. You've got uh, decks, controversial, I know, but a lot of people like it. Some people don't like it. So maybe it won't get trick of the year. Um, you know, I love it, but I'm not going, I'm not getting into the whole decks thing right now. You've got, uh, you got Cube 52, a lot of people like There's so many different tricks that people are raving about this year. I'm throwing this one into the mix. It's great. Now, at the end of November, I'll do a full review and I'll review it for you. And take my look, look, I'm biased. I consider Phil a friend. I've been not, I, in a way, I've been involved in this project from the beginning, but only in so far that I've been pushing Phil to do it. And I've given some advice as to how I would do it if I was him. But I, 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 I don't get anything out of doing this video. You know, if you want to say, hey, Craig's buy it, fine, by all means. All I wanted to do in this video was talk to you about something that I think that every close-up magician around the country 
around the world would be proud to own. And, uh, you know, Phil is just a genius and, and I think he's really outdone himself with uh, with this particular product. So it's absolutely amazing. This is not a review. This is just a heads up to tell you that Fusion Mosaic Phenomenon is now available from philsmithcreative.com. Remember, two L's. The link's in the description down below. You can pre-order it uh, and you get a five pound discount and Phil does ship worldwide. I know I'm gonna pick up about five or six of these because I don't wanna be in a situation where I haven't got one. They are great. So there you go, a little bit of a different Friday video for you today. You know, I just knew that this was coming out and I wanted to give you guys the heads up uh, and let you know that there's something out there that you really wanna get your hands on. So uh, yeah, I hope, you, uh, I hope you go and pick it up. But regardless, thank you very much for watching this video. I'll be back over the weekend with tons of videos. We're gonna have loads of stuff going up over the weekend, um, including uh, an interview uh, on Saturday with Paul Fowler, I believe, which is a great interview. And uh, you know, a, a full Q&A on Sunday. There's a ton of stuff going up. So make sure you check out all of that. You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I will be back again soon. And if you haven't already done so, go check out The Netrix, www.thenetrix.com. Go check it out and see what all the fuss is about. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV. <laughs>